Inside of this docking station, there's actually a Mac Mini. You, you don't see it? Well, how about now? It's truly inside there. All right, here's the thing. I really love my Mac Mini. It's quiet, it's fast, and it handles my workflows like a pro. But storage, that's an absolute joke because I'm constantly juggling between external drives just to keep this thing running. And that's where this comes in. This right here is the Acasus Mac Mini M4 Workstation. This thing is a beast. It's an 8-in-1 dock with dual NVMe SSD support that can handle up to 40 gigabytes of transfer speeds in RAID 0. And it's got more ports on the back than you would ever want. And it's all wrapped in a sleek aluminum design that resembles the Mac Pro. So basically, this turns your Mac Mini into a setup that Apple should have sold you in the first place. Now let's take a closer look at the dock itself. It's got a premium aluminum design with a grill for cooling and right in the front you get three USB-A ports. Yes, there are USB-A ports, but you can grab a USB-A to USB-C connector and you're good to go with USB-C ports. Now these USB-A ports are 10 gigabits per second, so you do get decent transfer speeds. On top of that, you'll find a full SD card reader on the top and a TF card reader, which are 4.0. This means that you're looking at good read write speeds up to 312 megabytes per second. This is very good for dumping out content from my SD card onto the Mac mini. Around the back, you've got display ports that are 1.3 output, which can let you connect up to three monitors, one at 4K 144Hz and the other two at 4K 60Hz. That's a huge upgrade considering the Mac mini only gives you one HDMI port out of the box. Now granted that one HDMI port can do 5K. You also get a high speed USB 4 connection that lets you connect the docking station to the Mac mini for faster transfers. And you also get a 30 watt power delivery port at the bottom of the dock in case you need additional power. In my testing, I did not need that so I never plugged that in. And the party piece is that the dual NVMe slot that you find here on the side. Here you can fit up to 16 terabytes of storage so basically, by connecting one cable to this docking station, you get so many new connections. The device dimensions are roughly 5.35 inches in length by 6.69 inches in height and 3.3 inches wide. So when placing it on my desk, it takes a lot less space than the Mac Mini itself because it's in a vertical position. So overall, it looks really nice on my desk and it makes it look clutter free. And it's pretty easy to set this thing up. The first thing I did was to flip the dock over and unscrew the four screws on the bottom. And then I popped off the base. I dropped in my Mac Mini to make sure it lines up properly. And don't worry, you're not going to scratch up your Mac Mini even though this enclosure is aluminum. It's got rubber padding on the sides that avoid you from scratching the Mac Mini. Next up is the storage. I took off the side plate and slid in two terabyte Samsung Evo Plus NVMe SSD. These are quite easy to install. Then I closed the lid and powered the device on. Then I grabbed the included USB 4 cable and plugged it into the dock and the Mac mini itself. And that's it. The setup is done. Monitors started working. My USB storage, my two NVMe SSD drives instantly got recognized and mounted to my Mac mini. It was smooth and hassle-free, a very straightforward approach. All right, time for doing some speed tests, but before we do that, let me explain you some different drive modes that you can set up within Mac OS and get the best performance that you desire. First up is the default mode. When you install your two NVMe SSDs, they will show up as separate drives on your Mac mini. No extra setup, it just works like two independent drives working by themselves. Now let's talk about RAIDs and different modes of RAIDs. The first mode is the JBOD mode or just bunch of drive modes. This will combine all of your storage into one drive and make it so that it appears as one drive on the Mac mini. So when I connected my two 2 terabyte NVMe SSDs and I put them in JBOD mode, I get four terabytes of total space. This is useful if you're looking to get extra storage, but do keep in mind if OneDrive fails, the whole thing fails and you lose your data, unless you do time machine backups. Now let's talk about RAID 0, and RAID 0 is meant for speeds. 
RAID 0 basically splits your data into multiple drives, and since we have two drives, the transfer speeds nearly double because it's writing data or splitting data onto two separate drives and it's much more efficient. But do note that if one of the drives were to fail, the whole thing fails, unless of course you keep backups in time machines, then you should be fine. The cases says that this mode will work at 40 gigabytes per second speeds, so giving you a true USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4 speeds. Next is RAID 1, and RAID 1 is meant for redundancy. So if I have two 2 terabyte drives, it basically mirrors the data on both drives. In case one drive fails, I can easily swap out the drive and the system will rebuild or copy over the data from the working drive onto the new drive. The only downside is that it does take a hit on the write speeds when using RAID 1 mode because the system has to write data onto both drives at the same time. But when it's time to read the data, both drives work fast enough to retrieve that data or that information so it retrieves a lot faster. All right, enough explaining everything. Let's do some actual speed tests. Now, in my case, I'm using Samsung Evo Plus drives, but Acasis recommends using Samsung Evo Pro drives for the optimum speeds. All of their benchmarks and scores that I'll put right up here are based on the Samsung Evo Pro drives. All right, enough of chit chat. Let's actually get into the speed tests. All right, so we're gonna try and test out our drives. So the first thing I'm gonna test are the drive speeds by themselves within the enclosure. So turn on the docking station. There's a power button in the front. Inside of disk utility, I'm gonna see these two drives that are mounted, but these are not formatted correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So the first thing to do is click on erase and then give it a name. So I'll just call this drive one. And then I choose APFS file system and then hit erase. It's gonna format and mount the drive. Next, I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the other drive that I have. So again, erase APFS drive two and then hit erase. Okay, now both drives are mounted on the Mac mini. We can go ahead and do some synthetic benchmarks. For this, I'm using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is click on the settings gear and then select the target drive. And then in here, I'm just gonna choose drive one and then hit open. And then now I can run some speed tests. So the regular read and write scores are 1573 read and then 1224 write speeds. That's without doing any modifications. All right, so the process for doing RAID 0, RAID 1, or JBOD is always gonna be the same. So I'll just show you this once, and then you can just do that by by bringing up Spotlight and then just type in disk and then disk utility shows up and then you wanna open up your RAID assistant. So now you can choose RAID 0, RAID 1, or JBOD. So just to move forward, I'm gonna choose RAID 0 and then hit next, select the two drives and then give it a name here. So you can call it whatever you wanna call. I'll just call it RAID 0 drive. And then the format, I prefer using APFS I'm gonna do that. The chunk size, 256K, and then hit next. So for any of the arrays that you wanna set up, it's always gonna be the same process. For this, I'm using Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is click on the settings gear, and then select the target drive. We're gonna choose our RAID 0 drive, and then hit start. All right, our scores are very impressive. We're getting 2748 read, and then 2600 write, which is pretty blazing fast. Now let's do the same thing, some real world test. I'm gonna move my A roll folder, which is like 15 gigabytes roughly. And that roughly took around five seconds to complete. So if I do my, so if I do my calculation, 14.75 times 1024, divided by 5.5 seconds, we get a score of 2746, which is pretty much on par with the Blackmagic result. Now let's do it the other way. We're gonna write it back to our Mac mini. It's really slowing down. All right, that took 22 seconds. Now, if I do the speed test 
one five one four zero divided by twenty two. We're getting six hundred and eighty eight megabytes per second transfer. So what's happening is that Mac Mini's internal SSD is heating up, or basically the term is thermal throttling at this point. So if I let it cool down and try again, we should get a better result. All right, I've waited about five minutes to let the Mac Mini's internal drive cool down and let's see how long it takes. So we're gonna go ahead and move it over, start the speed test. All right, that took around eight seconds. So 15140 divided by eight seconds roughly. We get a score of 1892, which is substantially less. So the drive itself is not the cause here. The Mac Mini's internal SSD is getting thermal throttled, causing the speeds to slow down. And this is a common issue on a 256 gigabyte Mac Mini or the base model Mac Mini. All right, so for the rest of the drive modes like RAID 1, JBOD, and single drive, I tested everything the same exact way, which is by formatting the drive, mounting it on macOS, and creating the RAID. So for RAID 1, when I tested, I got 2716 megabytes per second for read, and then 1325 megabytes per second write. The benefit here with the RAID 1, again, is that it has data redundancy, but it does take a slight hit when it's writing data. As for single drive mode, I got 1573 megabytes per second read speeds and 1224 megabytes per second write speeds. So definitely the fastest is RAID 0, the most reliable or dependent is RAID 1, and then single drive mode is basically the baseline or the default. Before we talk about price, let me give you a full disclosure. The cases did not pay me to do this review. All they did was send me this device, no money changed hands, and then they don't have any say in this review or they don't get to review this. Now, as for pricing, this dock is available through a Kickstarter campaign, which went live on May 15th. The campaign will run till June 4th, so you do have some time. They are having a super early bird special, which makes this drive available for $99, and that's limited to 100 units. Then they have an early bird special, which is limited to $129, and that's limited to 300 units only. And the regular price for this when it goes on retail is $149. So overall, that's the price point. So here's the bottom line. If you have a Mac mini and you're frustrated with the lack of ports and storage, then this Acasis M4 dog changes the game. Basically with this dog, you're turning your compact Mac mini into a full blown workstation with fast NVMe storage, triple monitor support, and full range of ports and it actually looks good on your desk. Sure, RAID 0 and JBOD aren't for the faint of heart. You do need backups to make sure you are using those options, but the performance you get is pretty legit. Even at full price, this is a solid deal for what you're getting. No dongles, no clutter, just a clean setup and expandable storage. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'm making more content along the way, so I'll see you in one of my next videos. I'll catch you in the next one.